two. We are live on air. Welcome to another episode of the Primal Edge Health Podcast. I actually haven't done a podcast with a guest in quite a while, but I'm here with Dr. Grace Liu, and uh, she's joining me from all the way in my my former uh, home of Northern California. Uh, I'm here in Ecuador, and we're live talking about gut health. I've got a million questions that I could ask Dr. Liu. I've listened to several of your podcasts um, over the years. You've been somebody that's always been on my list of, I need to talk to this individual about gut health. And I put it off for a while because, I don't know, it's just, I, I like to be really dialed in and tuned into a subject when I talk about it, but I don't know, something about this week made me just want to contact you. And you were so open to coming on the show, so thanks for coming on. How's it going, Grace? Awesome, awesome. Thanks so much for having me so on. You, I've seen your material on and off, and uh, yeah, everything you're doing is amazing. Everything I'm doing. Well, you don't know everything I do, Grace. No, I don't know everything. Oh, so that's why we're gonna have this <laughs> chat today. Yeah, <laughs> I'd like to hear so, more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right on. So, um, you're into functional medicine. How did you get into all this functional medicine stuff? How did you get into like ancestral health? I know you just um, you mentioned you spoke at AHS recently. Um, how did you come about this stuff? And um, let's just go ahead and get into your background a little bit, and then we can start nerding out on the gut, and I can start just uh, trying to pick your brain. For as long as you will let me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I I love talking about poo. Like, I I think I think like as soon as microbiomes nerd geek stuff started coming out, like that that was like it. I was like just fascinated, just absolutely fascinated. But um, the way the way the way I got into functional medicine was like a lot of practitioners who get into functional medicine is that they start reading the literature and they're like holy fuck, we're just like screwing people with conventional medicine, drugs, pharmaceuticals, right? And low fat, blah, 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 you know? Um, so I worked in um, traditional uh, medicine and I just see people get on drugs like every two to seven years, that's the stats. And I think yeah. Big Pharma love that, sure. you know, add a new drug on, up yeah. the doses. No, every... Big Pharma doesn't care about profits. They're just here, they're like a public service, like the news. Um, and, and if you watch the news, they'll inform you on, you know, Big Pharma is great, so just, just throwing that out. Obviously being facetious. Wow. Yeah. It's, isn't it crazy? It's like it's we're, we're literally, we're so programmed to believe that, you know, these authorities are actually doing what's good for us and are actually doing what's right for us. And I think that's a natural inclination. It's like we were talking about the tribal nature of humanity earlier. Yeah. It's like we want to believe our authorities are proper authorities. And for us to believe in the structure of society to actually have a productive, healthy society, we have to believe that those authorities are doing what's in our best interest. But um, I mean, what actually broke that glass house down for you? I believed in drugs. I was like a big drug pusher. Like you would not believe yeah. like, uh, I mean, literally like just really super into drugs, um, like a good trained little pharmacist. And I got onto, I was really healthy. I was even doing like half marathons, triathlons, all kinds of stuff, CrossFit. And yeah. Um, I got onto this drug, um, which kind of coincided with a storm of stuff, right? It was like a storm of shit. <laughs> but yeah, I got onto right, like right. A, uh, a really potent uh, xenoprogestin. So, you know, we're always like harping on xenoestrogens in the environment. We try to avoid plastics, yep. phthalates, you know, parabens in our lotions, um, all these things that are super estrogenic because men are becoming women and women are becoming men uh, because it's yeah. shifting our hormone patterns. We already see it in. Um, mm -hmm. Her, uh, you know, hermaphroditic frogs and fish and blah, blah, blah. But it's happening to humans. Yeah, right. Anyway, I got, I got on an IUD, which po promoted out a huge dose of hormones. And uh, before I knew it, I had lost, like, I got really ill. I didn't couldn't figure out why, you know, the head OB kept saying, oh, no, it's fine, blah, 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 you know, but there's all this fine print. It can cause cancer. It can cause this yeah. and that. Actually, it can cause a lot of bad gut. Yeah, that's and crazy. It's like, it's, this is totally case. safe. Yeah. Yeah, this is totally safe. It's totally fine. Don't bother reading, you know, this pamphlet that tells you legally yeah. what we have to tell you. Uh, it's, oh man, it, it's, it's hard. So it was your, it was your conscience shit. actually, your conscience ended well, up. Well, it took um, me years to even figure it out because I think initially people didn't post things on the internet. I couldn't find adverse effects associated with it like mine because I was getting heart yeah. failure symptoms, pitting edema, depression, mood, wow. you know, uh, everything. Yeah. 20 pounds. Just full game. breakdown. Yeah, Every I lost all my muscle. Of... Yeah, you atrophy oh, when you're immunocompromised. And as we get sarcopenic, yep. we lose our longevity. That's what we look at for m men and women getting older. Like, what is their sarco, 
you know, sarco are they sarcophilic, making muscle? Are they sarcopenic? They can't hold on to muscle. Are they hard gainers? You know, the hard gainers all there. They all have gut problems. Hello. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and you, yep. you know, pathogens in your gut. Yep. Anyway, so I, I was able to figure it out, but by doing so, I had to transition out and I became a uh, certified AFMCP with IFM, Institute of Functional Medicine. And now we teach, actually, we have great, amazing protocols for rapid recovery of gut health. So we teach, um, we had a conference last year and we're repeating it again in May, May uh, 5th. I'll send you the link later, Tristan, but it's May 5th to 6th. Love to uh, see. Yeah, in uh, Berkeley Marina area, right off the water. Right. Yeah, we're gonna teach all our wow. microbiome protocols as well as epigenetic protocols using state-of-the-art, really amazing, um, this product called fermented mistletoe from Germany. Um, oh, it, like most of the cancer. Though. Yeah. Yeah. So Whoa. I love all things fermented and this thing, you actually have yeah. to shoot up, but um, it's awesome for vitality, treating co-infections, treating all kinds of autoimmunity. And, and more importantly, it reduces cancer. Like people are, if they're doing it IV, uh, like they do in uh, clinics um, across US and in Germany and Switzerland, they, they melt metastases and cancers, like people are cancer free wow. three to nine. So, it's, so you're doing IV infusion of an alkaloid extract or is it a full, what, I'm not sure what is it's the- it's alkaloid, uh, but the treatment, yeah, for cancer, cause it, like, like glutathione, it's cytotoxic at higher doses sure. at IV. Um, a lot of things are even vitamin C a little bit. Um, so it treats yeah. co-infections, Lyme, you know, viruses, uh, all these epidemic things that we haven't really seen in human history, but now they're all coming back and affecting people and their gut. Yeah. So that's, yeah. Like, that's like the newest, uh, terrain, you know, tool. And it's actually just ancient. Like it's, uh, it's yeah. fermented. It's made in this like amazing way. Uh, it's, a, it's a bit ayahuasca. -y. <laughs> well, so it's so that. incredible. Like, so we have, we have Chicha here. So we're in the Andes of Ecuador, right? So oh, there's a group called yeah. Chicha. And, uh, if you look at, Are they coca leaves? No, or, oh, well, you have coca else. leaves. I could show you some coca leaves, but I don't have any right now. Um, okay. Coca leaves are incredible, but there's a fermented drink called Chicha and it's made from corn. Okay, and I gotta go there and try it out. You, you, gotta, you gotta come through Ecuador sometime. If you ever wanna come through, just hit me up. Uh, we'll, we'll figure some stuff out. Really beautiful Absolutely. place. Absolutely. Um, and you can spend, I mean, shoot, you could spend a month in Ecuador and see 20 different microclimates that are all completely different. You can see snow-capped volcanoes. You can hike through the jungles. You can you see uh, glacial meltwater in the crest of the Cordillera de los Andes. Like, you could see all this stuff and that not leave an area that's smaller than a third of California. It's incredible. Oh, that's um, wild. You know, but what's crazy, How too, lucky. is to travel through here. Yeah, it's like to travel, yeah. it's very small, you look at it geographically, but then when you travel through here, it takes just hours to get anywhere. But anyways, there's this chicha okay. drink, and uh, okay. I, I forgot why it came up in my mind, but it's, a, it's an ancestral drink that's been done for hundreds and thousands of years here. Um, it's bet. slightly alcoholic, yeah. but they do like a four-step fermentation where they like mm. bury this corn and they'll ferment it. Then they'll pull it out and then they'll mix in panela, which is like sugar cane juice, and then they'll ferment that in a different way. It's this really weird process. Yeah, my daughter loves it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. it's really cool. My daughter, my daughter likes it quite a bit. We got to make sure she doesn't drink too much of it though, because it's like kombucha. She can get a little bit, a little bit tipsy on accident if she does. Yeah, um, off the one. To yeah, fermented mistletoe. Alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. That, well, that, the mistletoe stuff sounds incredible. I mean, I'd love to maybe. Um, I mean, there's a hundred different supplements I'd love to like ask you about, <laughs> and just uh, strategies and ways for healing the gut. But let's talk about some of the most common things that are wrong with people's gut first you know i mean let's let's go through the basics right we've yeah. got an audience here a lot of people here are into low carbohydrate diets a lot of people here are trying to reduce their inflammation they're trying to reduce their health they're trying to get you know get control of their body and figure out um what the hell is really driving the system there and yeah. um gut issues seem to be a big issue um low carb diets seem to have a beneficial effect for some people especially initially but it doesn't always do what people hope for it to do, right? Everybody's hoping for their diet to change everything and just really get to the root of all their issues. You know, I mean, some people, they go on keto or they go low carb paleo and they completely get rid of their depression and their inflammation and all this stuff. But then other people right. have a harder time. So right. let's talk right. about the gut microbiome, how this might be affecting people's general health and well-being. And um, 
I've got a I've got a shitload of notes here. I don't even know where to start. I mean, how do we identify the characteristics that are desirable in a healthy gut microbiome? Let's start That's there. A, Easy question. question. You're right. Live in Ecuador. <laughs> Um, nearby, um, well, okay, not really nearby, but probably, um, you know, there are a lot of little micro niches of uh, societies that live long lives. Um, they're, they're called by National Geographic and some authors, you know, as the blue zones. So you're near Nicoya Peninsula. Um, and when we study people who have no diseases, no chronic conditions, no um, cancers, you know, no issues like that, and, and um, you know, healthy babies that eat all foods, not like low carb. <laughs> There's no centenarian society that's actually low carb. Okay. So yeah, let's get, right? just get that out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because if you have the whole complement of colonization of microbes in the gut and your skin and, you know, your nose, throat, everywhere, you know, tongue to tail, your, your, your gut flora actually help break down complex carbs. When you mm. eat a complex carb, it'll be covered in microbes and spores. Spores uh, <clears throat> aren't, aren't killed by heat. So even despite cooking, because we cook all our starches and we cook, you know, some of our, our a lot of our foods and meat because they're easier for us to chew. So we're not wasting hours, like where we waste hours foraging, right? We don't need to waste hours more chewing. So humans aren't dumbasses, right? So we, we, we utilize so many tools so we can break down nutrients and get them into our bodies and brains. So when we have the full complement of colonization of microflora, they, they break down a lot of things for us, including fibers, complex carbs, proteins, and fats. I, when you look at ill individuals, like those in Western society, even, even a lot of my clients, they look super fucking hot on the outside, but we yeah. do testing and we're like, I'm like, man, if I had your labs, I'd be like fucking dead. Okay. So a lot <sighs> of people, they may look awesome on the outside. That doesn't mean anything these days. Cause we can also hack a lot of things. We can do cosmetics shit, you know? Um, but when we look at labs, when things are missing, especially gut flora, then, then I know like something's off. I know like, oh, okay, you know, you're not really tolerating oxalates or salicylates or, or our simple like complex carbs really well or FODMAPs. Like if you can't eat FODMAPs, like that's kind of a roaring big issue because FODMAPs are like air for the gut flora that protect the human gut and health. The, the guardians of the gut all eat FODMAPs, inulin. And, and that's saccharides. a really popular protocol right there. So there's the popular protocol, yeah. the FODMAP diet, right? Where you remove oh, all yeah. FODMAP. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now, where or might SCD that apply? Or AIP. Why? Yeah. Yeah. So, so why am I you know, removing FODMAPs? Because your flora don't break it down. And then instead, you have a lot of pathogens probably in the wrong place, the small intestines, like fungal overgrowth, yeast, candida, as well as bacterial pathogens. And they eat lots of FODMAPs. And so they'll kind of overgrow. And that's not really awesome. Mm -hmm. So we're yeah. looking so at I like kinda, a war I look at, between yeah, beneficial so, and unbeneficial microbes. Is it, is it so it's, simple it's as harmony. beneficial and non-beneficial? Yeah, I mean, to simplify things, that's how you can look at it. Yeah, because you can also even have some of the good stuff. Um, like I talk a lot about bifido and lacto, but we have good versions and bad versions. In, in healthy centenarians, they have a lot of the fiber eating bifido and lacto. They don't have very much of sugar eating or starch eating bifido and lacto. So there's actually good and bad. Now, what but, about candida, C. diff? Like these are normal in the human body and they're required, oh, yeah. right? We, all, like, we all have like several have percent yeah, of either. But if they're overgrowing... And it's hard to say, you know, we don't have accurate measurements right now. Like I don't even look at stool, even though I've seen hundreds and hundreds of tests for stools. Um, the yeah. way to go really is actually urine because we see what's leaking into blood and then we get, and then that gets captured um, when the kidney filters and we see the metabolites and organic acids. So urine is really the way to go. Like there's one company mm -hmm. currently right now, Naveen, uh, Jane is the CEO and Helen, Dr. Helen Massier, she's really uh, big and um, an academic and, uh, professor uh, with uh, IFM, Institute of Functional Medicine, and she's the chief medical officer. Right. Um, I'm consulting with them, and the patterns that we can see there, like for disease, are all like present. You can, it's like that's the last generation, like that's gonna be it. We can really look at a lot of things that way. Stool is very minimal, yeah. what we can see. Most things die by the time they get to the stools. That's the problem. Yeah, and it seems to be the gold standard. It's like people get a stool test, they're like, well, I've no, got the gold standard currently is the SIBO breath test, which is just a bag of fuck <laughs> it's like misdiagnosed so it's basically everybody. just measuring hydrogen in your breath right uh yeah you know but you have you have also hydrogen eaters in the gut so it means nothing and also the yeast and candida they don't make hydrogen or methane they make they make uh, carbon dioxide so maybe so basically a, a healthy person could give a false positive and an unhealthy person could give Absolutely. a false negative with the test yeah and it's more so the, the false negatives that it, be, yeah Go yeah well it. even if you are treating SIBO if there is yeast present you're going to create more because most of the botanicals or drugs 
will kill off bacteria, but not the yeast. So then you're left with even more mm. fungal overgrowth. You see that? So people initially may feel a little better because everyone has a little bit of pathogenic bacteria if they have fungal overgrowths or viral overgrowth. It's just part of the whole terrain that they mix together. Yeah. yeah, so there's a lot of issues I currently have with the way uh, functional medicine is being treated. That's why we have our protocols. And it's really awesome because uh, we've had concierge doctors and really big like gurus like Jessica Flanagan, who um, is a guru for the AIP diet and author of The Love, the Love Diet. Um, she's amazing. Um, but immediately after doing our protocols that we taught last year, she said that she doesn't even use the AIP diet anymore. So AIP diet for people who aren't aware of it, it's like the autoimmune paleo diet, which is super restrictive, just like you mentioned, like no FODMAPs, no starches kind of freaking nothing. <laughs> people people can barely eat anything except, you know, drink bone broth all day. And and then I have problems with bone broth, you know. If you're already allergic right, to some people permeability, get yeah, the more collagen you eat, you're going to become allergic to it eventually because of the permeability. you got to mm -hmm. fix the root problem and first identify the root problem. So people who do, who do experience these types of things, so say somebody's got disruptive gut microbiome, they know it. Um, they don't know what to do about it. They don't know what tests to go about. But... Oh shoot! I mean, there's there's a million different rabbit holes that we can jump down right now. Um, there's, I'd, I'd like to maybe get into some of the botanicals, some of the like the sure. uses for the uh, the applications for some of these things. Um, you talk about in some of your uh, presentations about pruning versus seeding. Um, so you want to be pruning back on the bad micro uh, the bad microbes, or pruning back the gut microbiome, and then reseed it and rebuild it. Um, yeah. Can you go and just Talk about some broad strategies and then we can just dive down. Yeah, wherever, yeah. Wherever so I, I, I work with people. It's quite extensive because people don't get ill in the gut overnight. Usually it's something either from right. birth right now. Yeah. Or, you know, teenagers, 20s. So people who come to me, they feel like they've only been ill like a year or two or, you know, a few months or something. But really the damages have started decades earlier or even at birth if they've gotten formula, you know, and didn't have the proper birth canal experience. Yeah. Yeah, so I work with executives. Right, I mean, C-section kids, like C-section yeah. kids are high rates of autism, um, like much higher autism rates. Oh, and, they're high rates of everything, uh, yeah. Allergies, asthma, um, dermatitis, acne, yeah. Head to toe. You're, you're, trauma? You're, you know, childhood trauma seems to be associated with this rather microbiome yeah, as well. I'm not, like the, the, I'm not the biggest, um, I'm not really super aware of that, but yeah, definitely, yeah, all of that. But I mean, we have all these amazing tools. Otherwise, the kid or mom or both would be dead. So, right. we can be right. grateful so, so say a kid they misses, they miss the vaginal birth, right? They miss the yeah. vaginal birth. They get some infection. Maybe back then they weren't swabbing, so now they'll swab the vaginal flora and maybe put it on the kid, put it in their mouth. Um, so, say somebody was dealing with something like that. They've grown up with an autoimmune condition for a long time. Um, yeah, you know, just disrupted microbiome. Right. Um, so then they, st they start looking into how to fix it. Um, yeah. So a lot of my clients, they, they come to me, they have not just one autoimmune condition. They've got like two or three. So we usually work together for eight months. Um, I, I work with executives, multitasking moms and athletes, you know, endurance athletes, MMA fighters, and we work together for eight months and we reduce body fat, brain fog and fatigue in about eight months or less. And it really takes a kind of like comprehensive, um, integrative, uh, intervention plan. Uh, we do four phases, and each phase is about two months, and we're targeting different things in the gut. We're rebuilding immunity at every stage. For for almost everyone, their adrenals are hit, whether they realize it or not. So we either do testing or I do like verbal surveys with people, and we, we have to bring the adrenals back because the adrenals give us all the trophic hormones to rebuild tissues and organs, receptors, everything. So if we don't have the proper adrenals and too much adrenaline or not enough or, you know, too much uh, cortisol or not enough, when these are dysregulated, they really halt, you know, healing. So we have to bring all those and then we focus on the gut. What's really in there, you know, you, you, I, the main test I run on people is the urine organic acids from Great Plains, only Great Plains. Mm -hmm. uh, because that gives this full comprehensive panel. There's um, 12 markers for the fungal overgrowths and then... Um, about eight to 10 for bacterial and we get salicylates. We can t really tailor a diet temporarily until things get better. So it's an amazing so overgrowth and bacterial overgrowth. They usually come coupled together. Yeah. Um, and I, mean, I guess you probably noticed all kinds of patterns in your years of working with so many. Different yeah. Individuals. The patterns are really what emerge and you know, yeah. Yeah. Because people mm. not only do they so, get autoimmune, like to like, let's say if they have a joint problem, right? It could be fibromyalgia, alkalizing yep. spondylitis or rheumatoid arthritis or polyarthritis. They're allergic to their own collagen in their joints or something along those lines. Um, 
what happens is when we have enteric flora, we can become allergic to our, even our own enteric flora. Like for instance, I had, um, I got really ill and I had chronic fatigue for three years. So studies show for depression and chronic fatigue, people are making antibodies against their own enteric flora, like the parasites there, Morganella, yeah. Klebsiella, Citrobacter, whatever. And for different people, it, sh it, it, it will present in different ways clinically. It could be like a joint problem, yeah. thyroid problem. For me, it ended up being brain. Like I got really bad chronic fatigue and immune issues. So everyone's a little different. Maybe it depends on their nutrigenomics. Yeah. So we always pattern up. I had, a, I had a really similar situation of just like intense oh, yeah, depression like a, from an injury. It yeah. started from a, kind of like a traumatic brain injury type situation almost where a, it wasn't a direct yeah. brain injury. I got a car accident. I walked away from it, thought I was cool. Everything was okay. Oh, um, wow. I was skating and I, I got nailed by a car and it really, I'd already had scoliosis. So I had some like energy okay. flow issues through the spinal okay. column. But yeah, that so one cool. issue ended up kind of putting me out you know I got real depressed I couldn't do what I wanted to do I was in a lot of pain um, for about man for years you know and I'm still like I still when I do deal with yeah. you know immune suppression issues or when I do get sick it's the same symptoms come it's up right and you notice yeah. that like it seems like this is with everybody right everybody's got their their mm -hmm. thing where it's like when you start getting off balance and out of the health range there will be the first symptoms that show. Like I used to have asthma and allergies as a kid and was, you know, raised on amoxicillin and I, the exactly. pink medicine. The pink medicine, the pink right? medicine was the yeah. shit. It was so good. I used to like, I used to want an extra dose of my antibiotics when I get my ear infections and stuff because it tasted like bubble gum. It was amazing. Yeah, and you knew it helped um, temporarily. It can help temporarily. Yeah, mm -hmm. It did. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, eventually uh, um, through that injury, um, well, it's That's interesting right. you bring that up. A lot of my clients do have CTBIs, and obviously, like, I'm always trying to protect my fighters, you know, from any further damage or reverse what current damage they have. So a lot of things we do, we, we're re rebuilding vagal tone and parasympathetic nervous system, but, you know, reversing mm -hmm. brain damage. And it's important you bring that up because anyone who gets hit, whether it's a car accident, I had a bike accident myself, and that was part of my whole storm, but mm -hmm. um, anyone yeah. who's, like, um, having either severe gut or brain, uh, you know, because we have the second brain in the gut, so I bring that up. But um, it's really important to address that because um, the second someone's hit, studies show immediately the gut breaks. There's immediate hyperpermeability. It, it, the body yeah. can only have so much energy. I mean, we, we have unlimited energy, but it is fixed to a certain extent because we're humans and mortal right yeah. now. And yeah, yeah, so if your body's trying to heal the brain, then it's less energy for the gut. Same with endurance athletes or all my fighters. You know, even if they're hypo hypoxic for two minutes in, in the cage or, you know, an endurance athlete running and running for hours, like they're not having oxygenation to their gut. The body can only do so much, you know, they, you can condition and you can bring up all your superpowers, I believe, especially when you're, you know, tapping yeah. into your microbiome um, energy there, the, the maximal, you know, making your, your gut as powerful as possible, you know, with pre, you know, fiber prebiotics and uh, our protocols and things, but the gut, mm. you know, there's limited energy. So then what gives out? It's going to be the gut first thing yeah and well in my situation to outside. My injury, yeah. yeah so your injury, say, my, my injury was actually to my hip right so it was like it was a oh. it was a blunt force injury to my hip which locked up my left leg for to a certain extent and i already had a leg length mm. discrepancy and i already had curvature in the spine and i already had back pain you know so i already had like i'd already and i was very unhealthy at the time right like eating ben and jerry <laughs> You know, Ben and Jerry's Burger King, like I was, in the co I was a college student. So I just, I thought I was yeah, invincible. You just did, yeah, you just I thought I was invincible. I thought I could well, skate through red lights. I was until I realized that cars, like you can't go through them. You can't, you know, you just, <laughs> they, they're physical. And um, so, yeah, they locked up my, uh, my hips. And I notice now when I, if I push my body too hard with exercise, say if I start, like I love running, it gets you a high, like. But I know that my biomechanics, they don't work that well with it. So if I push myself too hard, I can push myself into gut issues through mm. exacerbating this old injury. And it's a weird cycle that I'm always trying to keep in balance, right? And I, I, you probably noticed the same thing with a lot of clients yeah. and athletes and stuff. Right. But um, yeah, sometimes I'm just like, you know, you get those days where you're wondering, damn, man, am I broken? And then you get those days where it's like, oh, you get three or four weeks where it's like, boom and like every shit's a one wipe wonder and you're just feeling great but then you know I've <laughs> once in a wonder. while that's awesome yeah we'll have to steal that <laughs> yeah, you can take it you can take it I love that. <laughs> but yeah i mean it, it's crazy to me and this is this is what i love about your work is you're taking such a dynamic approach to how you're treating people and i mean as a you know as a doctor in the medical community 
it's so refreshing to see somebody taking this, and this is a loaded term, it sounds hippie to a lot of people, but the holistic approach, where we're looking at a holistic system, systems within systems within systems, and um, there's so much that can inform and impact it. So, um, I mean, just out of my own selfishness, what do you what do you normally do with these individuals with issues like you've seen, like I was just describing, you know, people who've had injuries, and then they find that their gut tends to be disrupted with that injury. Um, how does one go about a holistic approach to healing such a such a conundrum. <laughs> I mean, our, our strategies aren't simple, um, and we uh, take like H three and up, um, but we just see incredible results. You know, you, usually people have been through the ringer already, um, and have um, spent. You know, like 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 I'm sure as you have. You know, like our personal finances, like we we spent just tens if not 50 to hundreds of our own you know money to heal a lot of things so the protocols are you know we try to make them as stark and simple as possible um but we do target those three things all at once um nutrigenomics which is like the dna blueprint for everyone that's why you're different than someone else and someone else you know would have a different customized protocol <clears throat> and we get faster recovery that way and then we look at the trophic hormones um and potential you know like one hormone we can't measure, but BDNF is the brain derived neuro neurotrophic uh, factor. And we really want to complement this so we can get healing not only of brain, but also the gut brain. Um, and then we look at gut, the whole terrain. So one of my good friends, uh, Nisha Winter, she's the one who turned me on to mistletoe. And she just uh, wrote a book um, uh, with her nutritionist, Jess, called The Metabolic Approach to Cancer. There are many ways to approach things. And um, we just target what we see. Um, we're always very, very evidence-based. Um, and we just happen, we're really lucky and grateful, but we just see really good responses um, with, with our clientele. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you've it's, got, it's you've got a system that you've it's been using intense. and refining, and you've got all these tools that you've been using. I mean, you've, it sounds like you're juggling a thousand different things. And for this interview to Not actually really, satisfy but... me. No, but, it, but there, all right, so here's where I'm at. I like, <laughs> I'm in like, I've, I love the deep knowledge. I love this deep stuff, but I'm also trying to pan it to my audience and get the and get the basics at the same time. Um, yeah. So let's let's talk a little bit about. All right, somebody threw up a question. Is there anything we can do to help self aid? So uh -huh. Dave, I don't know. Dave P says, "What can we do to improve our microbiome?" That's a really broad question, right? Most people have completely different issues with their gut. My gut is going to require a different approach than your gut. But what are some general um, things that people can do to improve their gut health and their their general well-being through their gut. Uh, so if you if you want to check out later, um, Pale Effects will be putting up my talk, um, but it was on oxytocin. But I, I really uh, like Tristan. I really believe in like a lot of lifestyle changes for people because that that in the end is going to be the long game. Um, number one, yeah. people have to be happy. Um, so sometimes we can stimulate that. Like I use either, either nasal oxytocin or we put people through our vagal protocols, you know, meditate, breathe deeply, belly breathing, um, nasal breathing. Um, there are a lot of little tricks you can do, you know, if you, if people can't really meditate, it's mm -hmm. not that hard to meditate. Now that's something that I've always noticed. Meditation. Yeah. I think that can be a huge um, game changer for a lot of people. Oh yeah. I mean, I One know, hour. People I grew up not using my health. diaphragm. Like the diaphragm is such an important muscle. Um, yeah. What does is, what is a diaphragm even do there? When you're deep breathing, what effect is that having on your gut microbiome and on your physiology? Uh, well, what some say shows that it will normalize cortisol. So either people have high cortisol or low cortisol. And what I look at is adrenaline. We have different surveys to like uh, really get down and address adrenaline. But if it's too high, our pathogens get turned on. So everyone has them, and they're always looking to party, you know. But we don't really want to give them that opportunity because then they wreak havoc and they take over. And you know, our gut microbiome—they all talk to each other. They communicate. Like the ones in the eye know what's going on with the ones in the gut. Breast milk, for, for instance, is not sterile. You know, when, when moms give breast milk to the babies, they're not only giving the immunoglobulins from their own immune system to protect the baby, they're giving their fiber coming off the lymph uh, uh, surfaces, uh, gland surfaces, but they're also giving their bacteria. They're actually giving their poo bacteria <laughs> to the baby. Um, and we can turn on and off, yeah, uh, we can turn on and off the good bacteria because when we're stressed, the good bacteria go away, they fall away, they, they can't survive under those circumstances and the pathogens get turned lit up and then they're like just kind of 
taking over. So some people, it's fine, you know, it's momentary and it goes away and nothing happens. Other people, they're going to get like gastroenteritis, you know, horrible adrenal problems, horrible gut problems, can't tolerate even more foods, you know, they have to start restricting more mm. foods and their overgrowths get even more out of control. Yeah, so, so w to be very simple, like one is happiness, getting outdoors, just being outdoors, you breathe in all the good flora, you know, granted it's not like a glyphosate covered park, municipal, you know, greens. Um, yeah. And then third, look at diet, you know, everyone um, is gonna thrive on a different ancestral type diet. And even in my clients in the beginning, we, we gotta kind of restrict because their body is currently having like autoimmune issues to diet. But that's hopefully just really limited and only for a month or two max, you know. So the um, restriction phase, like when people do a FODMAPS type diet, when they do like a complete elimination diet and they start getting relief, some people think that they're stuck on that. Like that's what I got to do. Like I've got to just eat like this forever because this is what's working now. Um, did you run into a lot of clients who kind of gotten stuck? They dieted themselves into a corner like oh, that. Oh yeah, afraid totally. To and then and they start getting depressed because now they're isolating themselves. They can't go out to yeah. eat with their friends. They're tired of explaining to their yeah. friends, "Oh, I can't eat this," and blah blah blah. Or their friends feel sorry for and them. And they're afraid of food too. It's like and anytime they eat something, it's like food, they don't know exactly. what's going to happen. Yeah. So typically, my clients in a, in four to eight weeks, they can start liberalizing. Some, you know, they see the light of the tunnel already, and then they start eating everything. They love it, and then they start eating, and then we're like, "Oh my god!" Like now we've regressed, and now we're going to take two weeks to get back to where we were. Originally. But, you know, I like seeing yeah. them see the light at the end of the tunnel because so many people for years and years have already eaten a really restricted diet. And that's super fucking depressing. Like I even challenge my clients by eight, month four and six, you know, they should be able to eat casein and dairy and, and gluten even again. And they're always shocked yeah. when they can. They're like, oh, my God, because we have tools that allow this to happen. And, and a lot of it's our probiotics, but we clean up the terrain. And the key is just looking at that terrain. Um, you know, if we don't have it, then you probably, yeah, no, you're, the probiotics will never anchor in seed and they'll never be able to utilize their pro wonderful probiotics, which will break down, you know, mycotoxins, gluten, dairy, gliadin, casein, lactose for them, you know, and then they can't eat. And every little smidgen of like a gluten contamination is just going to send them to bed or whatever, you know. And that's kind of sad. right. Well, and that is that's a really common thing. Is like people who like been exposed to gluten through the air. I mean, I knew a guy that would break out in hives if you touched gluten. I know. He, really I don't know sad. how much of this was psychosomatic. I mean, and this guy, he had a powerful mind. You know, what I'm saying like this guy could mm. make shit happen in his life. And he was a type of person where it's like if he started just like manifesting his reality in a certain way, he could he could think he could make things happen really potently. And well, I, that's you know, probably how he survived for so long. You know, the gut problems, yeah. it's not a big problem for a lot of people, really. But when it is a big problem, it can really hamper a lot of people's lives. Absolutely. Which is, it's all changeable. Sorry. It's all changeable. And the gut, how often is the gut changing? I mean, how often is the gut microbiome reshaping itself? And, and um, with every you know, I mean, thought, it's not just a, with every meal. Ooh. So thoughts can influence the gut microbiome. Have we seen any studies on this? Because I know, so like I, I know if I get depressed, if I start focusing on the wrong things, I will throw my immune system off and the first thing I'll feel is gut disruption. And yeah. I think but at which times I've even- The depression or like a shift in the gut, right? That's Sometimes the question. I, and yeah. I'm always tripping on that too. It's like, because I remember, I, so I, here's the one thing that I think is a really big issue for a lot of people. And this might sound controversial to some, if this is controversial to you though, get out from under a rock because this is the 21st century and we should be asking so where funny, things like autism come from, right? Like where is autism coming from? Right? So, I mean, you, you look at some of the research, um, the MMR vaccine, for instance, right? And I'm not like anti-vaccine pro vaccine. I'm not right. choosing a side, right. but just think about the information, consider the information that's out there about MMR vaccine linked to autism. When are we getting these vaccinations? I remember fourth grade. I remember the round of vaccines I got in fourth grade. That was a big transition for me. About 10 years old, you start to kind of, you're not like hitting puberty, but like you start to look for nudie magazine. Like you're changing. Like it just <laughs> life is, you know, like your friends are like finding playboys in their dad's closet and shit. And it's like, and you're, you're getting interested in girls in a different way. It's like, and it, it's a weird time socially and everything. And uh, I, it's such a, I remember getting, um, a little bit down in like fourth grade, just feeling a little bit off and funky. And I was thinking the other day, you know, when looking and reviewing some of this information that's just coming out with the, uh, you know, the CDC whistleblower, whistle, uh, William Thompson, um, mm -hmm. and uh, certain films that have gotten a lot of attention, like uh, Vaxxed. Um, right. And I just started thinking, man, we're getting a traumatic influx of Timerosol, perhaps, not anymore because they've removed Timerosol. But, you know, we're getting... 
Yeah, I mean, and they've done studies where measles, measles in the microbiome, especially if kids are exposed early, can lead to Crohn's disease later in life and stuff like that. And it's just, yeah. I remember fourth grade feeling a little bit off and just like, um, you Not know, every, we have, yeah. we have a round of so vaccines at eighth yeah. grade. The next, yeah. the next one is seventh, eighth grade going into middle school. So you're already, you're nervous about this situation. Like you're completely socially overwhelmed, insecure about the future, mm -hmm. about what's going on. You know, if you're, if you're in a, if you've been broken down enough by the public education system, you're full of insecurities and all kinds of nonsense uh, at this time. And then you get a gnarly vaccine dose that can disrupt the microbiome even more. So I, I don't know. It, it's really crazy to me to see like how we are kind of being set up by some of these schedules to have offensive things happen to our microbiome at these crucial points in our life, like birth, which I mean, obviously the trauma of birth alone or the beauty of birth can be so profound and we're giving vaccines to kids for hepatitis b um exactly. and right away and it's exactly. like it's it's insane and I, i'm not trying to drag you into this you don't have to even say an opinion if you don't want to because i know as a doctor it's hard to speak about some of these things and it takes a lot of guts to um so thanks for even coming on and talking to me anyways but um yeah, I don't, I don't know where the heck I'm going with that rant, but it's just, <laughs> it seems like there's, there's a whole assembly line of wrecking our gut systematically almost with, you know, vaccinations, poor food choices, um, lack of community aspect in a lot of our lives now. Um, a lot of these things seem to be doing the opposite of what we need to be. Uh, yeah, and I think towards. they all affect the gut. You know, if we're isolated, not in tribe, not having the support of tribe, uh, people who are super like-minded, you know, and they usually share like similar microbes as well, you know, and that's probably mm. a way of replenishing themselves, I feel like, you know, um, whereas if you like some people have a lot of parasites and some of their friends usually do it ends up being, you know, so it is absolutely. True. And we're not, not, not just what. physical parasites. Too. I mean, we've got these emotional, <laughs> psychological parasites and we see how those travel through society. And it's, it's so yeah. crazy to. You know, yeah, when you social look media at, like, unfortunately gives all the cowards a voice, but, um, but they're, you know, we, yeah, it's, just know. A, it's just a fractal of what's going on in our gut. You know, our gut microbes, mm -hmm. they all talk to one another, like even dis, dis, you know, distinct uh, distant sites, you know, the microbes all communicate through something signaling called quorum sensing. And now we do too. We're, you know, you and I are on Google Hangouts um, or Facebook Live, you know, and, and um, a lot of people, they rely on Skype. We're also spread out all over the earth. Um, you know, we have all this, all these mediums to do so. Um, so it's really awesome. Um, but unfortunately, you know, it just depends on the terrain. If we don't have enough of the good stuff, they can't really, you know, balance, you know, some of the other kind of things going on. So it's just a matter of kind of balance. And usually I think the smart so people from, figure it out. Like m my clients, we, you know, unfortunately, you know, our, our, our protocols are pretty intense. So, um, you know, our, 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 our clientele are super sophisticated, you know, biohackers like up the wazoo and they're, they're not dumbasses and they, they get really good results because they know what's going on and why. And they understand they've already done a lot already and they know what doesn't work. Um, so, you know, and mo my mom's, oh my God, the, the mothers, you know, uh, take care of their kids. Usually I'll take care of the family, like one or two of the children, you know, they're just yeah. super bright and they've been through a lot already. They're just doing so much so that the next generation, their legacy can really have the best lives possible because they yeah. already have genetics. They know things are off. The next generation is just, it's even worse. Like for instance, so my parents and, you know, my grandparents, they all live to like um, 90 to hundred, like true centenarians, but this was like everybody. And they all ate like, yeah. Dirt. <laughs> you know, they had like uh, outdoor toilets, no running water, literally yeah. poop and dirt were everywhere, you know, farm animals everywhere. Um, they're super, you know, their diet was the centenarian diet. It's called the poor diet, right? Now we're like also yeah. super rich. You know, we can buy, you know, triple sterilized food at Whole Foods. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, and, I mean, and, and my sisters, instance, right? so yeah, like, and my brother, we all develop an autoimmune problem before age 17. My brother by age two and we all got formula, you know, we were just jacked up from day one. Um, we, so me and you are kind of similar, um, but I, you know, I didn't get vaccines till later. Um, uh, but you know, I don't so know what this my brother was. is 14 years remember, younger. Yeah. He got, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I got just, just to clear it up. I don't know what my schedule was like. I just remember, I remember the fourth grade, the seventh grade and the high school one. And those were all recall. epochs in my life where I was vulnerable. I was vulnerable, depressed in a lot of these times and afraid and that lowers your immunity. So if you're getting a, you know, a, a potentially harmful dose of a, um, you know, some neurotoxins at that time, I think it can be a, a pretty gnarly thing to the body. 
But um, and, and, I, and of course, I'm not going to blame my problems on that too. Nature genomics, they have like mitochondrial, um, you know, just slight susceptibilities. I don't make a lot of glutathione. I have a couple hits on glutathione, so not everyone gets ill. Um, my parents obviously do too, but they were protected. They they didn't have formula. You know, they had this whole legacy of eating lots of dirt all the time, every day, their whole lives. <laughs> so, you know, even though they got lots of vaccines or whatever, and even antibiotics later in life, you know, they're fine. They didn't have that critical window when things, you know, you're right. So they're in our youth. And as children and toddlers, like we have these critical immune windows where we're being imprinted to the environment, to everything. Things are lost there. But I do believe like, cause my clients see such great changes and I have as well. Like it's able, we are able to reset certain things. So our, our conference coming up in May, um, we give away the urine oat kit and we're gonna be giving away several other pathogen um, parasite screening kits as well. It's an amazing package. Like I think we're gonna have over 15 to $1,800 worth of amazing goodie bag uh, gifts and kits, gut kits. Nice. Um, and uh you know and uh it's so it's virtually free like i think we lock knock the price down it's only 199 for membership but wow. you know we're teaching these protocols because they they really make a big difference and we're not annihilating the gut the key is the gut's already annihilated yeah. we don't want to lower our good flora even further without you know without all the proper uh, precautions in place and it's easy totally. to do that we have tools now i mean we don't have poop in a pill yet that's probably coming down the way and that's awesome yeah. you know if it's a clean source no viruses no phage weird phages no you know potential yeah. pathogens for people no stress we're talking about like fecal microbiota transplant but you're taking <laughs> yeah. pill instead of going up the outdoor right i mean when you're water in ecuador you probably are doing it already yeah well you so know maybe the, that's the why water we got the water we got here is nice so and just anecdotally like behind me is the crest of the andes and over on the other side of that is the amazon so yeah. if you just keep heading east it's like you get to brazil eventually and there's, oh I mean, there's nothing out there. so it's yeah. like it's the air gets filtered across the amazon and all this you know it's getting churned up and just constantly recycled and then there's these ancient lakes that are above there that are just constantly leaking down and they've got microbes in there that have never even been seen before oh, yeah, ever. Sure, yeah. um, and it's just incredible. So people, I and mean, we actually, the community we live in is famous for having a lot of centenarians. Um, and, but it's, it's been partially debunked by BBC who said that they don't really know if these people are centenarians because they didn't have birth certificates, but there are a lot of old people and they find that the old people's iris, when they look at it, it looks like a, like a child's. So then they, you know, there's some of the markers That's of aging good. here, really incredible. Yeah. And it seems like the water has a big deal, uh, a lot to do with that. Um, I bet. Yeah. It's always course, water and all the centenarian um, spots. So I have, I have a few more minutes. I have until 10, but yeah, the centenarian spots yeah, are great. amazing. They're always usually very mineral rich. When I went to Costa Rica, I had done some uh, box jumps prior. So like one leg, I <laughs> both legs, I like <laughs> ripped the skins off. And uh, one, I put like a bandage and like certain botanical salve on it. Um, uh, the other I did, but it fell off. So like, it was all gnarly still. And I did only, I, we played in the beach and like overnight, like the, the wound was gone, like not even a bit of a scar. Like, so there's something about the water and probably all the animal poop that ends up in there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, there's, there's, there's so microbes. much, there's so much yeah. going on. Yeah. Because certain microbes so, like right, so bacilli, they increase oxytocin and that's highly associated. It's associated with higher wound healing too. So we have like, you know, we're really getting to the you interface. You mentioned oxytocin earlier in, in yeah. relationship with like tribal community and with, you know, nurturing. Yeah. I mean, that's the love hormone. It is. And it's also the trust hormone and it's our tribal hormone. You oh. know, just looking at people like you and I, like just, you know, eye, eye to eye or, um, you know, face, face, time face to, to face. face. <laughs> yeah, face to face. Yeah. Uh, Seth Roberts, he's one of the founders of AHS. He would always like, uh, repeat these studies how people could be antidepressed they can decrease depression just by looking at faces on tv like it could be even a tv channel news channel but wow. he would see like so i mean yeah. then that goes along with what we were just talking about earlier you surround yourself with certain things like you know bacteria you're in a community where there's a lot of certain bacteria or parasites you'll take those on same thing yeah. with thought forms same thing with emotional forms and these more Absolutely. subtle realms. yeah you can you can obviously think your way out or meditate or pray your way out of certain negative thoughts i think that's how a lot of people survive now because the brain is more powerful than the body definitely for sure and some people's brains are higher level i think you know they can get into the alpha state or gamma state uh so we do mm. certain things we have people do like apps you know just to get into the gamma state a little more because those those brain waves are healing and they generate oxytocin is what studies show and reverse brain damage. I'll, I'll send so a link to share with people. Yeah. 
I would love, yeah, any links you've got yeah. um, would be greatly appreciated. I know you're, you're pressed for time. I could keep, you know, questioning you forever. I've got a million different questions I could go on. No, yeah, and I haven't even got to yeah, touch on this. a lot of the cool stuff, right? Um, all right, so we, we're talking about pruning back, right? And how a lot of people yeah. get a little too gnarly with the pruning back. I mean, I've seen people using chlorine dioxide, high, oh, high oh amounts of Oh my God, I know. Like, when they tell me to right? use it, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, I mean, literally broad spectrum antibiotic and drinking oh, it and yeah. enemas. I mean, it's so. I mean, there's some people that are going a little too hard on the the pruning back, and so what can happen? All right, so the first stage is usually dial it back a little bit. Let's let's get elemental with it. Let's clean out the system. Then, what, how do you know when it's time to start? seeding how do you know when it's time to start from the very get -go, adding just, yeah from the very get-go we're seeding because um we mm -hmm. use general it's very general probiotics you can't use um ones that are histamine producing for a lot of people so we we have our own uh, bifo maximus you know i had worked with clients for like a couple years you know and myself like we would use all the functional ones like they just frankly suck like claire and uh, many of the ones um, just would not get into the gut. They wouldn't seed, wouldn't anchor. So we um, found some really amazing ones that are really effective for autistic spectrum kids. So anything for our mm. autistic spectrum kids generally works for anybody. So we yeah, finally, right. Isn't that crazy? How general and, population yeah. and autoimmunity stuff. How like they when you are, treat autism? They are the pinnacle. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it really is. It's like the cutting people. edge of, of human health degeneration right there, right? It's like the human Absolutely. genome being under attack so strongly. Yeah, um, very epigenetically I mean, Anybody damaged. who's got autistic kids out there, I feel for you. I've, uh, you know, my uncle, he had cerebral palsy. He has cerebral palsy. He wasn't supposed to live past 13. Um, and you know, it happened through birth trauma. And he, uh, he's 50-something years old now. And um, but I mean, it's just the, the amount of gut issues that he has, like, I mean, his, his body is, his wrists are Gnarled, completely yeah. turned in and he can't, very little mobility and, um, just retching pain. But you know, what's amazing too, though, is just like the, the life that comes through him, you know, he'll Aww. say things in his memory, like it'll pop through. Um, That's amazing. but yeah, no, it's incredible. So, so, all right. So you're always seeding and you're seeding yeah, with more seeding gentle probiotics. probiotics. Yeah. Because seeding will protect the native flora in the gut in just profound ways. Even 10, 20 billion a day is better than nothing. Um, and studies show it, it protects the native flora. They stay there, they don't get lost with any kind of botanicals. So botanicals are powerful. Some are as strong as like antibiotics. And so we stay away from those, yeah. like no high dose berberine, no no essential oils at all. Those mm -hmm. are so powerful. What would high dose berberine be? So berberine's a popular- oh, uh, like anything more than 500 a day is very yeah. damaging, yeah. What's, very, very what's the standard dose on bourbon? Like I know I've got garlic, a garlic, anything high dose, single single entity like garlic mm -hmm. or um, oregano oil. Yeah, oh my god, that oregano oil is horrible. Yeah, so too much. Yeah, we, <laughs> too we strong. use no essential oils essentially. Yeah, so um, and so the probiotics we generally use are like one called Equilibrium. It's 115 strain. We use a lot of prescript assist, 29 strain. A lot of the ones where we have multiple multiple strains, even though it's a low dose, mm -hmm. many are only like 500 million, one billion. But um, well, a prescript our, assist is something like 30 billion, right? Or no, not. I'm sorry, no, I was no, thinking it's of very small. VSL. I, I forgot. What about VSL number three? Oh, VSL is full of strep. You don't want. You want to avoid that you know, for all the early wow. stages. Yeah, strep. Uh, VSL wow. messes up a ton of people. A lot of my clients get messed mm -hmm. up with it. They end up with two or three more autoimmune diseases after starting it. So we stay away wow. from everything. Yeah, we stay away from Elixa. Elixa is horrible. I've seen it induce uh -huh. so many new autoimmune problems for people. Um, ours is, um, very, very high dose. So people like what I do is like, I have like a shake. I'll do a trillion <laughs> a day. Nice. You know? There yeah. you go. <laughs> and it's like it's also a fecal microbiome transplant as we're going to get right now. Um, like mm -hmm. with constipation or cancer, a lot of people are missing the strains that are found in our bifido maximus probiotic. And one study came out just a few years ago, um, PD-1 cancer drugs, they, they can cure people, but also it can also have huge adverse effects, right? Like mortality, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like death. All pancreatic cells, yeah. <laughs> like more cancer, organ failure, more liver death. failure, yeah. Whatever, yeah, your melanoma's gone, okay. But um, you now left, like, as this like, yeah. Yeah, you're shriveled up. Like, I mean, you're basically, <laughs> a lot of these drugs leave you in a state, yeah. like my uncle with yeah. cerebral palsy, it's like your life is, yeah. is robbed from you. It, it's yeah, it's, yeah. So in a rat study, they found strains similar to ours, bifolongum and bifolongum were equivalent to the PD-1 drugs. So. I'm not saying our, our, our probiotic. 
Long of is a found right. in centenarians, yeah, and probably in your Ecuador centenarians as well. But they've had two centenarian studies, and long is always overrepresented, as well as all the protective ones like Acromancia and uh, Clostridiolus. Mm -hmm. We want the acetate producers as well as some of the butyrate producers. Those those are always associated with good health. So uh, what about there's another popular one? So you mentioned prescript assist, another one a lot of people use AOR. What's that? Oh, AOR is awesome. Omega spore yeah. is superb. Yeah. You want so these are sort of our foundational ones. A lot of people can take these and they don't see benefit, probably because they haven't done the O, you're an O, and they don't know what's going on with their terrain. So it's just like let's mm -hmm. say you're a Tesla, all right? But you come to me and three, your wheels are missing, the steering wheel's gone, and maybe part half of your engine. You know, we could put the most premium yeah. fuel in you. But what the fuck? You're still not going to make it, right? You're not going to yeah, finish. Yeah, it's not going to latch if it's not going to catch. Yeah, much less like drive five miles, right? So we got to look at what's missing. Yeah. And for a lot of people, it's not obvious until we do the testing. The yeah. testing is really critical. I mean, a lot of times athletes I work with, you know, um, they can sprain an ankle or whatever, break their arm, whatever. They obviously know what's wrong and injured and they can fix it or, you know, 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 know how to see the right person to fix it. But with the gut, you know, now we have all this testing available through um, – all the functional testing, urine O, CDSA, Genova GIFX, Biome now. Um, but they don't realize that their gut could have a, a sprain, like a, bro a bone's actually like broken kind of. And, there, and there, there are many, many ways to fix it. All right. So it's, I know we're reaching kind of the end of the line here. I know you got other stuff to do. You got a busy life. Um, what's your website? Where can people find more about this stuff? Um, you mentioned some of the products that you guys are selling. I know personally, and I have no affiliation, like we haven't talked about this beforehand, but personally, I'm really interested in some of these probiotics as well because I'm always trying to and optimize we ship my gut health. Yeah, we ship to Ecuador. We ship to everywhere. You know what? I've got a freight forwarder in uh, Florida. So if I can oh, ship okay. stuff to Florida, I'll talk to you via email after yes. this. But uh, where can people find your stuff? And are you doing, do you do any courses or webinars or anything like that that might help people to... Uh, to get to know a little bit more about this. We've just broached the surface, folks. I mean, I, I've got a list we of notes here. I haven't asked her any of these. This is like, <laughs> I haven't talked about any of this. And, uh, and I, I'm, I feel so sad because it's like, I feel like we just just kind of tapped the surface of it, but maybe we'll, we'll talk again in the future. And um, um, yeah, so where can people find awesome. you? Where can they find me? Um, we have, um, I'm the founder and CEO of the gutinstitute.com and we have all our products that I mentioned there and the kits, test kits. And we have some amazing classes right now that really bring to the layperson level, you know, just the basics of what's going on. So we have a basic group gut class and then a very super advanced, um, gut class, which has eight modules. It's super intense, but we got amazing feedback from it. Yeah. We've had, uh, several dozen people go through it and it's, it's just amazing. Um, so it's almost like seeing a practitioner in a way, but you know, there, um, we give all the like basics and, uh, what we kind of do for a lot of our clients in that class in the advanced yeah. class. Cause we're, it sounds we're, like that'd be good for somebody of, like yeah. me who lives, you know, somebody like me who's working from home, who lives in a crazy place in the middle of nowhere, something, um, that would allow yeah, me to you learn. Can get mail. Yeah. You can get the yeah. kids, send your poop out, send your pee out. <laughs> right on. Right on. So that's gut, uh, the gut institute or gutinstitute.com, right? The gut institute, TGI, the gut institute. Fantastic. The gut yeah. .com. And you're going to have a talk from AHS that should be released pretty soon. I'm excited to see that. And I just, I'm, oh, you have a podcast, don't you? Don't you have a podcast? Yeah. My, my co-host, he traveled the world and we haven't like re-merged again. Uh, Matt Pepin. Yeah. But we have the past uh, episodes are on iTunes. Uh, it's called the gut guardians. We go a lot into just, different overgrowths and he healed himself. He's amazing. And he was like one of many uh, cases I saw early on that could, you know, really transcend a lot and get full gut health, eat gluten again, all this stuff. So That's it's, so a, he, cool. yeah, so cool. Matt's awesome. You know, it's funny, just, just my own, from my own case, I've never had a problem with gluten. Like even if when I've had That's like awesome. issues with injuries at times and like, I, I never seemed to have a direct problem with gluten. And at, uh, a couple years ago, I remember I was eating so healthy. And then I just like, I kept pushing myself into sickness. I was stressed out. I had, my daughter was on the way. Like it was just, I didn't yeah. know what was going on in life. Like, and I was, I was freaking out about it, like existential freak out. And, um, but when I, when I, my gut would get unhealthy, I would just like, I would eat bread and stuff. And that would be sometimes the only thing that I was able to digest at that time. It was, it was a weird thing. Um, completely backwards to what you would think. 
That's interesting. Do you ever find some people with like with gut issues who like the gluten just doesn't seem to bother them, but then other foods at the time well, do the gluten bother actually them. is it's really pretty subtle. Yeah. And a lot of people yeah. when we see their adrenals, they're flatlined. So sometimes eating a food allergen brings their ad adrenaline up to actually detectable level and that's you know they like it that's the only way they get adrenaline so it's very Maybe that's what i was doing i was self i was probably self-medicating there just trying to probably. feel better and, and the gluten it's very seemed normal, to very help natural. for some reason yeah yeah well, but people yeah, have to kind of take wild. it away for a month to see the immune system kind of quell and and uh notice a difference at that point and a lot of people are allergic to dairy they don't realize it but dairy is a lot like gluten mm -hmm. Um, and it looks, uh, unfortunately, a lot like our, our tissues, brain tissues and other tissues. So they don't, they don't realize, mm -hmm. you know, thyroid tissue, joint tissues, and they don't realize there's this cross reactivity. Yeah. So some yeah. of the, some of the major offending things just for people out there who are like, all right, we talked about a thousand different things, but we just broached the surface, C cutting out gluten and cutting out dairy might be huge steps for a lot of people, even if they don't think they got gut issues. Yeah. And the guy try it kind of for at least two weeks. I, I, I prefer four. Yeah. Well, if you guys have other issues, don't hesitate to uh, email Tristan who can email me. Um, this is super like fun. We, we could do it again anytime and delve into other topics. Yeah. Um, and hey, I'm going to, I'm going to hold you to that. I'm going to record that. After you try the probiotics. That. Yeah. Have me back on. No, I, and, and, I'm really, I'm looking forward to talking to you more about all these things. Um, I've got a thousand, I mean, I, I had a, other questions like just about certain herbs and stuff that I like. You, you talked about Boswellia. Um, but yeah, just, just to go ahead and seed this in your mind for the future, um, cat's claw, uh, choo choo huasi. These are some other local herbs that are yeah, used around here. Yeah, rainforest ones, yeah. No, I love all the mm -hmm. rainforest ones. I'm not too familiar. I don't use them often, but some of my colleagues do, and they're awesome. Some are very yeah, potent. Cat's claws one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, a lot of them are very, very potent. Uh, Pau de Arco. I mean, there's Pau there's a lot. There's so many right. things I wanted to ask you about. Pau de Arco um, can thin the blood the, a little. It blocks K, K, so you have to be a little careful. But that's awesome. Uh, yeah. And it causes so much die off. Some people get a headache from the tea. Yeah. Yeah. But we well, this seems to be a big problem right there. Some people going. So, uh, some of the takeaways before I let you go. Don't go too hard with pruning down your gut microbiome. Don't go bleach your butthole. Um, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh, and uh, maybe cut out gluten and dairy, even if you don't think you need to, you might feel a little bit better without them. So see how it feels. But uh, the gutinstitute.com, I'm excited to check out some of your probiotic blends and stuff. So, because I'm gonna, I'm about to go through another little round of maybe modifying my diet and messing with my gut a little bit. I'm always trying to find. I'm just, I mean, it, we're on a shifting platform, and we're always trying to find balance in this moving plane. And um, I think it really. I've been saying lately, like health is kind of like an art rather than a science at this point for me, you know, just maintaining vitality and health and happiness. To me, it's an art. That's how I see it. It's informed by science, but people like you, you know, talking to you, I see like you're, you, you look at this like an artist, like you're looking at this, you're pulling from so many different disciplines and um, sciences and you're putting together a beautiful picture of um, how to build the gut, how to rebuild it. And, um, I appreciate you taking your time out to talk to my crazy ass here in Ecuador. Oh, you're my pleasure. It was so fun. That's a really interesting way to put it. I kind of thought of myself as like a Tesla mechanic, but that that's even better an artist. Ooh. Well, that's an art too, right? Like to, to really tune in a car, like to really tune in an engine, I and mean, even just a carburetor to get it right. Like you got to get the yeah. jets for your altitude correct. You've got, there's a lot of exactly. things that go into it. So it really yeah. is. It's like, and uh, yeah, I, I, I could babble for days with you. So let's get, let's get this off. And um, <laughs> gut, thank you the gut thank Institute. You so much. Um, it was fun. All right, great. Bye guys. You guys can find more at primaledgehealth.com. Check out the gut And I'll go ahead and throw a little plug out there for my wife's cookbook, the ketogenic awesome. edge cookbook, a training manual for low carbohydrate, ketogenic and paleo cuisine. You can find that exclusively at primaledgehealth.com. I'll see go you guys. Primal next time. Edge. Yeah. Cool.